Uh, let's talk to Shadow Justice Secretary Steve Reid now, who joins us live from College Green in Westminster. Good morning to you. Good to be with you, Julia. Um, thank you for joining us. It's good to see some uh, MPs are still working. That's nice to know. Um, you got an announcement today of some extraordinary figures on the number of dangerous prisoners, including rapists and robbers, who have either escaped, absconded, or been wrongly released uh, from prison over the last decade. Tell us how bad it is. Well, it's absolutely shocking. Over the last decade, there have been 2,000 cases uh, where prisoners have um, escaped, absconded, been released in error, and that works out to three, on average, every single week for a decade. Now, those are bald statistics, but when you boil it down to what this actually means, we had a case uh, of, a, of a sexual offender awaiting trial, a man called William Fernandez, just over a year ago. He was supposed to be going to trial, but he was released in error, and once he was released, he went out and he raped a 16-year-old girl and sexually assaulted another teenage girl. So behind all of those statistics, there are stories, harrowing stories like that, that leave the public at risk because this government has not got a grip of the criminal justice system in the way that they should. I mean, it's certainly a massive concern. We, we know there isn't a, a grip on the a, a people well coming out of jail, certainly not going into jail. The government has announced today uh, that they're, they're going to want uh, prolific shoplifters, but those who've committed a heck of a lot of offences, will be caught for a heck of a lot of offences, facing uh, mandatory prison sentences. Um, we've had the retail, uh, British Retail Consortium him saying they think in the last year there would have been eight million shoplifting offences because it's pretty much been to all intents and purposes decriminalised up to 250 quid worth of goods but only 339,000 offences recorded by police and only 48,000 charges brought in all of those cases you know you're not just a shadow justice secretary you're also a local MP you must have spoken to local shopkeepers in your local high street as I have done in my high street this is now becoming endemic with the shoplifting is this the solution or is it too little too late well, I, I, you're, you're right, Julia. I have gone and spoken to local businesses in my constituency in South London, and I've heard you talk about exactly this problem previously as well. But when I went down to this local supermarket in Norbury, what they told me is that when they call the police because of shoplifting, the police tell them they're not coming. Yeah. So uh, under this government, effectively, it's a form of lawlessness that has been licensed. They're then advised not to try and stop the shoplifters in case it leads to some kind of altercation or fight. So because of that, shoplifters are shoplifting to order so they they know what they can sell they go and get it off the shelves they sometimes wheel it out on trolleys uh, and then they go and and sell it now how does that make the shop workers feel the business owners feel uh, you know your your viewers will work hard for their money and then they go out and they spend it and they see people getting away yep. with a crime like this now there are two things that need to happen aren't there really first of all they need to be arrested and secondly they need to be prosecuted and punished so we need enough police to come and arrest them. So if the government's serious about this, why don't they pick up Labour's proposal, which was to tie up procurement across all of our police forces, which generates enough savings to recruit 13,000 additional police officers. Then there's a chance perhaps an officer will come to a business that says that there's uh, shoplifting going on. Secondly, we then need to punish those people once they've been arrested. Now, going to prison would be the end result of repeated shoplifting. We'd need enough prison places, wouldn't we? But the government got rid of 10,000 cells and has failed to build the extra ones that we need so the, the justice secretary the previous one wrote to judges and told them to stop locking up criminals unbelievable but it's true uh, that's what happened but for the lower level offenses the first time shoplifter you wouldn't send them to prison you'd give them some kind of community sentence make them do unpaid work uh, to pay back to the community for the harm that they've done but since 2014 there's been 16 million 16 million hours uh, of unpaid work handed down to offenders they've never been made to carry but, but out this, I mean, this is the if thing. You do shot can I say, this is the thing that people are so flabbergasted by. You could be sentenced and they still not do it, and then nothing happens. That should be, you know, you turn up late the first day, I'm sorry, you, you're, you're straight to prison. You, you had your you know, one and only chance to get away with not going to prison. The reality is, it's now a free-for-all in this country, isn't it? If you do go to jail, you go to jail for a, a half the time of the time you've actually been convicted. You've got a chance, as you said, figures Labour have put out today, of being released uh, by accident or being able to abscond and nothing happens. And your chances of going to jail, you know, the figures you put out yesterday for your 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 party showing only six percent of uh, crimes are actually uh, ever actually result in any charges or, or ever That's actually right. solved i mean we have basically now we've got lawless britain and yet the government tells us crime is going down 
Well, it's lawlessness licensed by this Conservative government. The crime isn't going down, is it? We know that crime is going up. There aren't enough police to arrest the uh, criminals, and then they're not made to carry out the sentences that they're given afterwards. We, I mean, one of the problems here, that over the, over the period of this Conservative government, we've had ten Justice Secretaries. They barely last a year each. So it's not long enough for anyone to really get a grip of the system and then make sure criminals are being um, punished, prosecuted, and, and communities kept safe. Now, that is never going to happen under this Conservative government. They've had 13 years to get this right, and actually everything's going wrong. We need to get to a situation where if you commit a crime, you are arrested and you are punished and you're stopped from doing it again. Okay, let me also ask you about the other big story around today. There's North Sea oil and gas. Rishi Sunak wants to max out our reserves in the North Sea. Uh, we've still got that pledge from Labour that you don't want to issue any new licenses if you get into power next year. Although, at least there's some sanity. Uh, uh, your leader, Keir Starmer, has said you won't actually renege on and cancel any of the licenses that are issued before that point. Um, do you think that you uh, and other members of the front bench Labour Party understand quite how much this country is going to rely on fossil fuels for the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years? In which case, if you did understand it, why would you have that policy? Of, of course we understand that, Julia. That's why no one's saying we're going to revoke any existing licenses you're not going to for decades anymore. to come. We will, still be, we will still be using fossil fuels. But we also know that we need to be transitioning away from fossil fuels to the clean energy of the, of, of the future. That's you know, wind, wave, solar, mm -hmm. nuclear. If you look across the channel at France uh, and you look at how their energy bills went up last winter, it was a fraction of the increases that we saw in the UK. They trebled uh, in the UK. Because they, because, because they have nuclear power for their electricity. Because they have nuclear power and they also have onshore wind, which I heard you uh, are talking about a moment ago as well. If our government had invested in homegrown energy, nuclear, wind, wave, solar, you know, we, we've got plenty of wind and waves in this country. It's an island. We could be harnessing that to provide the clean energy of the future. It costs three times less no, to doesn't. generate energy that way no, it than it, yes, it does. No, it doesn't because you have to have the... No, it doesn't, Steve. This is the big lie. Because it's not reliable and you can't store it and there we haven't got the battery storage that would cost trillions it doesn't exist right now no one thinks it's going to exist in the next 10 20 years well, look, uh, no 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 steve it, it did that is simply untrue there, it's no steve what you channel, said please. was untrue because you have to have the gas gas stations and you have to have the nuclear power stations to back up when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine so you have a double cost so you're miscounting all you have to do is look across the channel and see the difference in their bills compared They've to They've got nuclear bills. power stations there's a, there's coming out of their ears. There's a that's happening, Julia. It's not by chance. Uh, we, we had some of the biggest increases in the world, despite having North Sea oil yeah, because, uh, over the last couple of years. Because we're not a net years. exporter because anymore. because we don't have enough of our own energy. No, I've been on this show before, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. We need to take back control of our energy and generate it here at home. It not just gives, it gives us cheaper energy, but it gives us a more secure supply, so that we're it's not, not dependent secure. on poor dictators. Secure. But it also gives us jobs. It, it gives us jobs. Okay, Build let me ask you. I'm, I'm, I'm question, I've just been discussing this with Ross Clark. Let me just ask you, Stevie. What percentage of our energy in this country is being produced on an average day from wind and solar power, from renewable energy? I, I, I don't Give know or take. That, but if you, no, oh, no, 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 you're, come on, you're hands, a front bench spokesman. You want to be in the cabinet in a year's time. Roughly what percentage? <laughs> It's not a pub quiz, and I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that question. But if you okay, if I asked you, if I asked you, is it in the region of, of the is it in the region of ten percent, twenty percent, fifty percent, eighty percent? Any, you can't, you can't be a front bench spokesman or want much to be in the cabinet. Much less than France. Much less than France. Much less than than France. Greg Hans says that. Drilling more oil out of the North Sea does not lower energy bills in this country or increase yeah, our, uh, uh, our own energy security. Not, not He's the chairman of, of the Conservative Party. No, He's I... the chairman of the Conservative Party. Chris Sigdidmore, the former Conservative Energy Minister, said this is the wrong thing to do. So you don't have to take it from the Labour Party. Okay. Take it from people at the top yeah, of the Conservative accept... Party. They I... don't agree with Rishi Sunak either. Well, they don't agree. They, just, they, they don't believe it's going to lower energy costs. Even if we do frack for shale gas, it wouldn't lower energy costs because of the stupid way we have our, our energy market in this country. Do, can I just Get back to the question I asked you. Do you not think it would be a good idea that a front bench spokesman for the Labour Party who wants to be in the cabinet would be, if you were there's an election tomorrow, you would be in the cabinet of this country getting to decide how our country is run, future energy policy, and, all, and having a vote in that, in that cabinet that you don't know 
You're saying that renewable energy is the future, but you don't know how much of our energy is currently produced from renewable sources. Do you not think that's a bit of a I worry? I know from looking across... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a walking Wikipedia, but I, I do know from that, looking but across a rough the channel... Idea. I know that from looking across the channel that in France they have more control of their own energy... They have and nuclear they have power stations. ...as a result of it, and they have better jobs uh, mm. in the energy sector. Good, secure... I want us to have lower energy bills. I want us to have secure yeah. control of our own supplies, and I want us to have and, those good jobs. OK, Why and can I clarify? We can do, do you believe we can do that I with renewable energy? we can do energy. than the French, Julia. Do you believe we can do that I'm with sorry, renewable energy? Energy. We have to do it with new, renewable energy because in the end fossil fuels are going to run out. So we have to take back We could set ourselves we could set ourselves an ambition to become a clean energy superpower by investing in wind, wave, okay. solar, nuclear, all of it, and okay. get back control of our own energy okay. supplies. So we're not dependent on dictators like Vladimir Putin ever again. Okay. The, the reality is Wind and, as we've just been discussing with Ross Clark, wind and, and solar and other renewables only produce about 4 or 5% of our energy needs because it's a small percentage on, on an average day, I think the average, of our energy needs for electricity. But 80% of our energy needs aren't electricity. You can't produce, you can't produce cement or, or steel or, or many other things. You can't eat our homes without gas, without other fossil fuels. I mean, so Julia, do you not think you there? should why know that? Why, why in France is it why do you keep talking about the French? of all of their energy that comes from renewables? Are you, going to be, are you shadow just secretary for France? It, but, but you're not. You're shadow just a secretary for the France, UK. You, you want to be. You, you want to be in the cabinet of our government. We're not going to do as well as France. We should do better than France. They are 21 percent, I think, in France of their energy comes from renewables. We could do that. It's more secure no. and it's cheaper and it 21 percent of their electricity, too, the energy needs. 80 percent of our energy needs for the country are not electricity. We're going to run out of fossil fuels. Okay. We can see just... what fossil fuels are doing uh, to the climate. We've got can to invest we? in the jobs of the future, not the jobs of the past. We have to move. I have to let you go because I know you've got another interview and I so appreciate you staying on to talk to us, Steve Reed. But this is my worry, Steve Reed, Shadow Justice Secretary. Appreciate you joining us there from College Green.